Hey everybody, what is up? It is Doug and welcome to another edition of the Village Idiots. And tonight, or today, whenever you're watching this, I have two new guests, but they are not two, uh, two new people to Spooky Villaging, Halloween Villaging, whatever you want to call it. Um, we are going to talk today, it's going to be a fun subject, we're going to have a 2020 recap for all of the Halloween Village buildings and kind of the Halloween Villaging scene in general. It's going to be a free-flowing conversation. We're going to talk about our favorites, our least favorites, some of the hot topics this year. A total recap. So, with that out of the way, uh, I have Kayla from Kay's Crafts YouTube channel. You want to take it over and introduce yourself? Hey guys, it's Kayla here from Kay's Crafts. Um, I just actually recently started this channel. I have a whole channel dedicated to display building for your spooky town villages and then some, a bunch of fun little crafts. I've been collecting for quite a few years now. Um, not seriously before, but the past few years, I've really started seriously picking up significant amount of pieces and have a lot of fun with it. So I thought, hey, you know what? I'm gonna start putting it out on the internet and sharing with everyone. And I'm glad I did, because I got an invite to do this super fun podcast with everyone. So I wanna say thank you again for inviting me and really excited to get started. You are welcome, and for I'll have um, links to everybody below here um, for your guys' channels. And um, uh, Case Crash is an awesome channel. You guys need to check it out if you haven't seen her yet. She's newer on YouTube. Amazing displays, and by the way, that display behind her is real. By the way, if you're watching this, is she actually built this display and has a full working background, so it's not like just a cheater zoom background like I have. So, all right, thank you for joining us. And then we have my buddy. Mac Haunt Former with a uh, quite large Halloween channel. Actually, he does Spooky Town. He does a lot of different Halloween things so, um, throughout the year. Mac, you want to introduce yourself? Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm excited to be here. My name's Mac. My YouTube channel is Haunt Former. Um, I've done Halloween stuff since I was like a baby, and I was never into the spooky villaging until 2014. We always would do like a Christmas village under our tree, but Halloween village was like new concept to me. And so when I went into Michael's in 2013, 2014, I saw the villages, got my first piece, which was the dead man's cabin. And ever since I've gotten like at least one piece a year. And now I have a pretty substantial collection and a good little reservoir of information that I use uh, when it comes to spooky villages, but it's a lot of fun. I know I, I've watched Doug's channel for a long, long time, and so it's cool to be on the show. Thank you. It's awesome for you to be here. I love watching your stuff, and it's cool to know that was your first building. I never knew you actually knew. I never mm -hmm. knew what your first one. Um, yeah. Kayla, what was your first building that you ever bought? Can you remember? Oh, it was a gift from a friend, and it was actually one of the – Oh, I can't remember the name of it. It was one of the little um, trick or treat type lane, um, but it was Spooky Town. So the one that's got like the little, it's like the white one with the, like the picket fence around it. It's from a few years ago. It's like a part of like the original 13 series. I'm really bad about the name. So I apologize. I will do my best with this. We'll, we'll find which it is after. I'll flash pictures up here throughout the video as well. That's cool though. Um, what, what year did you start? You remember just vaguely? like 2011 2012 maybe okay cool so we're all in the last decade here really that's when we mm -hmm. got really going okay cool well um with those introductions out of the way let's get into it because we have a lot on the show here so what we're going to do we're going to talk about a couple categories our favorite least favorite what we think our you know missed opportunity was this year and kind of our sleeper building in a year and then we've got some emails or some questions that you guys wrote in whenever I posted um, something to my YouTube wall or, and on Instagram, you guys had some great questions and I'm gonna let them uh, take care of this here. So this should be fun. So, all right, we're gonna go, um, we will start with Kayla and then Mac and then we'll go to me for these. So let's start it off with favorite building of the year. Now these can be Lemax Spooky Tenor Department 56, but I can tell all you folks out there, um, I'm the one out of us three who's into Department 56 and I really didn't do any of it this year, the, the Department 56 stuff. So. Apologies there. This is going to be very, very Lee Max heavy. Um, all right. So, Kayla, what was your favorite building of the year? So, this year was really kind of complicated for me because there was a few buildings I really liked that I was very gun ho about when I saw the release earlier in the year as to what was going to come out. But I think for me, the Ghoulish Gourd Pub and Grill really kind of took the cake. 
I'm big on animation because I do such large displays. So the display currently that I have is over 200 square feet in size. So I really like pieces that are heavy in animation. So for that piece, the footprint is big. You've got the two very animated pumpkins on the top. So it brings a lot of great lighting and animation to an area that you can use some other buildings as backup or accent because I have so much going on that I just really liked it. I know a lot of people have kind of commented about the sound of the pumpkin as it turns or it spins. But for me, it really didn't bother me all that much. I think that I would rather have a piece that's going to be in good working condition that's going to last a long time and I will sacrifice a little bit of this or that to get that quality out of it. So I really liked the Ghoulish Gourd Pub and Grill and they did a great job with the theme too. On the review that I did, I was talking about that and you did as well. Everything that was in that building really stuck with it. So I think they just did a really great job. I, I love that building as well. To just add on, that's, that's one of my favorites of the year. It's not my favorite, but you pretty much hit the nail on the head. And um, also, you have awesome reviews as well, so hope to link some of those back back down here um, as well. But I, I love that building as well. Uh, Mac, what, what do you think for this year? What was your favorite? Well, this is hard because I, I used to say Spider Cider House, and I still really dig that, mm -hmm. that piece, and I'll be getting to talk more about that uh, as we go with the questions. But I'm going to choose something a little controversial and I'm gonna say Hideous Harry's Toy Factory, and there's a few reasons why. First of all, I really don't have that many animated pieces. My only one that I have is my Mad Pumpkin Patch, and unfortunately, both of the motors stop working on that, both the spinning pumpkin and the little roundabout pumpkins, which kind of sad, but one lasted longer than the other, so that was good. So, uh, unlike Kayla, all of mine are mostly static, which gets a little boring. So all of the, the spinning gears on that one, all of the, the, the toys on the mechanical features, and especially the clown head, I really enjoy the faces on all of the, the buildings, like with the Mad Pumpkin patch with the giant pumpkin. Um, Wasteland Pub comes to mind with the gas mask, and the same goes for that clown. It's, it just draws attention for me. Um, and it just was a really colorful piece that caught my eye whenever I saw it in the promotion, promotional material. And the fact that it was like a, a toy factory is something that I hadn't seen before, at least in the span of when I was collecting. So it caught my attention. Cool. I know that uh, Kelly, who has been on this channel a couple times here, the co-host, her son loves that building. And I, I've heard it's, it's funny, kids, and mine actually too, I my daughters really like that piece because of the whole toy factory vibe for it. So yeah, I guess um, my favorite, it's Jack's pumpkin farm. And the reason for that is, well, I have to talk about this later, I guess a little bit, um, kind of with sleeper too, but this one really kind of surprised me how much I did like it. I love pumpkin patch buildings, but I guess when I saw the pictures, it just didn't seem that special necessarily in those promotional pictures, but then seeing it in person, the inside scene is beautiful. It's, it's got one of the better inside scenes in Spooky Town, I think. And I, it's just themed really well. And of course, I am a sucker for the pumpkin patch, you know, the, the vibe for that. It was between that and the uh, Black Raven Manor, but I have to do Jack's Pumpkin Farm. I look forward to displaying that, you know, yearly. So I'm a, I'm a huge, huge fan of that. Uh, so let's go to the other side of the coin here. That was our favorite. So what was our least favorite of the year? And there's a lot that goes into this. What, what, you know, so you can explain why it's your you know, least favorite, maybe what kind of stuff you're into um, to kind of back that up. But Kayla, let's start with you. What was your least favorite of the year? So coincidentally for me, <laughs> my least favorite of the year, which kind of ties into one of the other topics that we're going to talk about too, mm -hmm. was the Toy Factory. And the reason for me is because I feel like they just missed the mark on it you can have a really great theme or a really idea of a piece, but if it's not executed well, I think that it causes just a lot of like jumbledness or convolution with the piece. For me, when you look at the toy factory specifically, there's parts of the building that look like it should be like a dilapidated old building. And then there's parts of it that look like it's brand new. And that's kind of confusing to me because then I'm thinking, well, where am I going to put this in my display? You know, especially if you have a larger display with a whole bunch of things going on. Do I want to put it in my city area where that's a little bit nicer, newer buildings? Do I want to put it in kind of like a creepy older, like rundown part of town, but it doesn't really match there, but it, you know, it doesn't go back and forth. 
I also think that they could have done a, jo a better job with the lighting on that piece. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't, it wasn't great. Like they have the eyeballs in the front of the clown, which I agree with you, Mac, the clown is cool on the front of it, mm -hmm. but why not light it up better? The when eyeballs, you put it, for sure. True, yeah. true. Yeah, why not light it up better? Because again, for me being having a large display, if I put that in the display, it's going to get lost. So all of those cool details that they put into it just disappear at night. And I know most of us, when we have it on display, there's parts of the day that you might have it on, but most times you have it on at night, right? Mm -hmm. So having a piece that's that expensive also, well, I think it was like $160 for Michael's or something like that. Yeah, I, yeah it's a big, it's expensive. Yeah, it's a hefty, it's a hefty tag. So for me, I'm kind of thinking like, if you're going to do a piece like that, you should really knock it out of the park. Like there shouldn't be really anything that I look at on that piece and think, man, you could have done that better. So I think that's a combination of both my least favorite and just kind of like, you just really missed the mark on that. You know, it could have been such a hot seller and been such an awesome piece. I just think it needed to be executed better. I will, Mac, I'll jump in line here just kind of to go on hers, what she's saying. Sure. It's, it's so the toy fact would be my least favorite as well. I guess my only caveat with that is least favorite can be tough for me because there are some buildings I don't really care much about. Like I don't really think about that much. Um, what is the one? It's the, uh, it's the tombstone uh, factory this year. Oh, I'm the, trying to the coffin factory. This it's a smaller building. It's one of the lit houses. I'll have the picture will be up here when I edit this in. I'm sorry, I can't think of the name of it. Is it Michael? Is it the Death Door Cemetery building? Yeah. Yes, I think, yes, I think that's it. So I don't, that building really doesn't interest me much. So I always look kind of my least favorite. I got to go kind of the headliners, right? That's what I, like, which one do I like the least out of those? And for me, it would be the Toy Factory for pretty much everything you just said, that they could have lit it better um, for the price. I just don't think all the features were necessarily there for the price. And I guess ultimately that's not my vibe at all for Halloween. So that's, mm. you know, a lot of this is subjective too with that so i get the people that like mac that, that really like it and that don't i i figured as soon as i saw the pictures of that building this year i just figured that was going to be the big divisive one and because it's kind of the headliner of michael's too and he, all those, those big buildings always have more scrutiny than the other ones anyways so mm -hmm. that's um that's kind of my feelings on the uh, the toy factory as well i, I would go with, with uh, kayla on that one so mac what was your least favorite of the year it's interesting. I like hearing your guys' opinions on it because when you start to like explain why you don't like it, I'm like, you know what? That actually makes a lick of sense to me. So I get that entirely. Uh, for me, my least favorite is it's funny enough because you mentioned it is the Death Door Cemetery Gates. It was it's just extremely boring. And out of all of the ones that, especially at Michael's and even with the the non exclusives, it just it's very plain. There's not a lot to it. I know it's a lit piece, but I actually don't mind some of the little porcelain lit houses. But this one just, it looks ugly, but not like the good ugly. Like Halloween <laughs> can be ugly, like a yeah. creepy ugly. But this one just like the colors are off. And I'm not a big fan of like the, the medieval stuff, which uh, again, I'll get to that in a bit. But it, it's just not my particular vibe for Halloween. And so just the, the weird hodgepodge of colors and stuff made it unappealing. I'm again, I'm with you there. I mean, really that one, I couldn't even remember the name of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's forgettable. It's not that I, I mean, probably I like that one less, but it's not as fun to talk about like a toy factory because the big mm -hmm. animated pieces, there are a lot of lit houses too that I don't really think much about. And I, I am with you though. I do like having some of those lit houses throughout the display sort of to, just add some normalcy to it because you know how when everything is going crazy, nothing is crazy because it's all crazy. So you, it's nice to balance those out. But I, I totally agree with that. I would guess there's probably a lot of people that would agree with our choices here. I just, I mean, you guys read the stuff online. You know? I'd like to um, pick up kind of off what Max said real quick and mm -hmm. comment on that. I definitely agree with you on that building. It was a huge missed opportunity. I don't like the way they did that one either. Because mm -hmm. if you think about a cemetery, mm -hmm. right, it's a dark, scary, overgrown, kind of scary, scoop, spooky place, yeah. right? So you mm -hmm. think of those dark colors, like the dead trees and all of that. And to me, it was just very like, oh, hey, guys, I died today. And now this is where I'm chilling out until they put me in the ground. You know, like it doesn't like yeah. it just yeah, a little I was, too bright. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. like, and you know, like, how are you going to fit that in? Like, I guess it depends on the type of cemetery scene that you have in your display. But like mm-hmm. for mine, like I do caverns. So it's like very dark and spooky, you know, type. You of have thing. legit graveyards. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely not like, a legit graveyard. Yeah, kind of like thing. you can kind of see like right there is one of them like in the display, like inside of there. And it's got the cathedral with the Gothic ruins in there. So when we talk about a piece like that, like, there's no way that I would be able to incorporate that. Like it would just look so out of place. It lo- it wouldn't look right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. I think that one goes more with like a grave, the graveyard party yeah. kind of thing, which there, I'm sure there are people out there that love it theme, you know, with that. So I guess that's the nice part about the variety and everything, but I agree. I, this for cemeteries for me personally, I like a really spooky style cemetery, like the, the graveyard. So I guess we'll kind of go into um, something similar, which would be biggest missed opportunity that we think this year. And that doesn't mean something we necessarily dislike, or maybe we do, but what do you think could have been, you know, what could have been really cool had it gone a little bit further? And uh, we'll start with you, Kayla, on this one. So when we originally got together and we were talking about these topics, right? Originally I was saying that I was going to do something other than the toy factory for my least favorite. But then I really thought about it and I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to switch my answers. So for me, the dead zone construction site, that could have been really cool. If you got rid of all the plastic pieces on that, put it into a ceramic type style and made like a cathedral out of it, like an old school Gothic, like Dracula's cathedral and did something that was more like antiquity antiquated or just like very old school with it like as if like Dracula is conducting his people to be creating his castle you know whoever it is that he's Mm -hmm. got making his castle that would have been really cool to have like you know the the flashing lights with the lightning with it along with you know because they have the lights as far as where they're actually doing them welding and things I like that welding light I I thought the welding light Mm -hmm. it is super cool I think they did a great job with that I just think they really missed the mark because for me, again, it's kind of like, where am I going to put that? And the footprint on it is large. Like it's a bigger piece too. And with you, the swaying cranes on it, you can't put any accessories near it. You can't put like the trees and things because it knocks them over and then it knocks it onto other parts of your display. So not only is it just kind of big, bulky plastic piece, it just gets in the way of everything else and everything gets in the way of it. So for me, I just think that was a really missed opportunity because they could have done an awesome construction type site on something that was actually like more Halloween-esque, you know? Mm-hmm. Cool. So. I, can, I can dig that. Mac, what do you got? So for my biggest missed opportunity, I'm picking the Creatures Custom Hot Rod Shop. And mm-hmm. this is actually one that I like and I still enjoy uh the problem is it's far too boring it's a static it just lights up from what i'm aware of and when it's when you think of a hot rod shop and cars and and the creature on the top looks really cool it looks like he's going really fast but there's no energy to the piece it's just very static and boring uh i was thinking of like what could they have done to make this better and two ideas i had were it's a garage so what what if either a garage door opened or like a car came out and like went back in? That's one idea. Oh, yeah. The other idea is That's the cool. hot rod on the top with the monster in it, who looks really cool, by the way, could like do like one of these type things. Like oh, Papa Wheelie. This car. I think that would have added something to it, but instead it's just very boring and eh, lackluster. I saw that for the first time. Um, the other day, actually, because I'm here in the middle. Oh, really? Yeah, so we have Menards, and Menards has oh. that piece. And, yeah, I agree. I, I actually, you know, I'm a car guy. I love hot rods and trucks and mm-hmm. everything. And uh, that whole design of the, the creature on it is like that old Ed Roth-style art, the hot rod art with the, you know, monster in the gear shift, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. So you've got this big, big, um, you know, it could be a cool hot rod shop, but it's really kind of, there's really not much on it, I guess. You know, it's. It's kind of a lit yeah. house, and it's a weird vibe for a lit house because it looks like it would do some wild stuff. Right. I guess. Exactly. And I cool like the chop they, shop from years ago. What was that, Kayla? I, it would be cool if they had done it like a um, – I don't know if you've ever seen one, but like a burnout bar. So, like, mm-hmm. that's really big within, like, the motorcycle community, which yep. are bars that you can have the motorcycle go in, and they do burnout competitions in front of the bar. Mm-hmm. So, like, to have it animated where the motorcycles go through the bar and they do burnouts, and that matches with the soundtrack of it. 
Like that uh, would have been cool. That, that'd be a great idea for a building because you know how they do that biker theme. There's enough in that, mm -hmm. like that kind of biker heavy metal theme. That'd be a mm -hmm. cool addition to that eventually. Um, I guess I'll jump in here then. Mine, it's it's got to be Pit and Pendulum for me. I recently saw this building too. I was excited to get that one this year. It's funny that as far as all the buildings, like when they were announced, I think that was the one I was most excited about actually because I like the carnival theme and I'm starting to dabble in that a little bit more. I've got a couple cool uh, rides, but with that one, I was ready to go get it, but I, I didn't wind up even picking it up just because the, the one I, and actually Kayla, your review of it was great. Whenever I saw that and uh, Landon Halloween channels got one too. He likes the building more than, than we do. But to me, it's kind of just jerky, and it, it I don't, kind of doesn't really have a – doesn't look like a real carnival ride either. No. Yeah. Like, I have it sitting downstairs because my next display that I'm coming out with is a full carnival display, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm only missing two of the carnival rides from the entire Spooky Town lineup. So – when I put it in there with all the other pieces, right? And I, I put my base together to kind of place things before I start actually building the display. It got so lost, whether it was in daylight or at night with the lights, because I test both out before mm -hmm. I actually build it to see how it looks. It got lost. It did not matter which pieces I put it near. It didn't matter if I put like the creepy clown academy or something like that. That doesn't even have motion really to it next to it to kind of deter from like taking away from it. It just got lost. The purple light is useless on the inside of it. It's useless. It doesn't do anything. Like it doesn't help. And mine does the thing, like you were saying, it gets locked in the center. It, yeah, it doesn't really look like a pendulum. It's like, you know, which is fine. I, I don't expect a full swinging action. It's, it's fine. We, especially in the carnival rides, you got to give a little with those the way they are mechanically. But yeah. And uh, again, I, I was really excited when everything was announced. I thought that is the one for me this year. That one looks cool. Um, well, that in the pub. The pub looked amazing, too, in pictures, I thought. But, uh, yeah, Pit and Pendulum, though, is just kind of, eh, especially when I saw it in Menards the other day. I just um, just was down on it. And um, I guess to kind of bring it back up now, let's go with our sleepers of the year. And, look, Mac, we'll start with you on this one. Um, go with your sleeper. And you know what? If you've got a cool accessory, too, maybe that, that goes with that. Uh, that you want to talk about because we didn't have that on our list here feel free to talk about that too but mac will be your sleeper so one that really surprised me uh the actually the first one that i got was the dragon's lair potion and spells and what's weird is first of all it's a static it's just a porcelain piece mm -hmm. and second of all i mentioned earlier uh, to to kind of segue is that i'm not big into medieval stuff at all and this is a medieval piece. It's got a dragon on the top. It's got to deal with potions and stuff. But there's something, when I saw it in the store, about the architecture of it that I just, it caught my eye. And I don't know why exactly. There's no, like, fancy lights on it. In fact, you know, I have a complaint with it. There's no external lights that, like, bring notice to the sign or to the dragon. But still, with that being said, in the daytime, it looks fantastic. I think it's it's nice and tall, so it kind of goes above my other pieces, so it stands out in that regard. Uh, it didn't really have a uh, a little piece that went along with it, mm -hmm. but the um, uh, what's it's the two guys drinking that 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 one really stood out to me. I think that could go with a lot. Mm -hmm. I think it's called Jolly Jack or something. It goes along really well with a lot of pieces, and I feel like it would go really well with that one too. Yeah, the, it was that was the public. Well, I guess it doesn't. You know, it's not officially the accessory with the pub, but it's the pub accessory. That one does look really cool. Yeah, we'll mm -hmm. go with a lot, especially yeah. for the town sections. Those are right. just perfect. Great. So, Kayla, what do you got for your uh, your biggest sleeper? So it's funny, actually. You and I had talked about this way before we decided. Um, we you invited me to come on here. And you had asked me what I thought about this piece. And I was like, ah, oh, it wasn't really anything spectacular. And then I actually, my hubby picked it up for me, thinking that I would really like this piece. So it just kind of showed up at the house. I plugged it in, put it in. I was like, oh, it was the Twisted Taffy Works, the um, Terribly Twisted Taffy Works. I really like it now, actually. It looks great in the display. It lights up so well. Like the taffy on the front of it, like it brings so much attention to it for just being a lighted building. I feel like you could actually classify that as an animated building because they did such a good job with the lights. 
So like you, the smoker, the flame tower on the top, it pulsates the um, free sample boxes in the front. They have like these little crates full of taffy in them that are free sample mm -hmm. and they pulsate. And then the cauldron that the witch is stirring the taffy in, that pulsates as well. So it, even though it's not an animated piece, it feels very animated because there's moving light to it. So I just think they did a great job and it's got like a good size footprint on it for the type of building that it is. So it doesn't get lost in the display. I just, I really like it. I think, I think it turned out a lot better. And I thought that the whole thing was plastic as well. The first time that I had kind of seen it and it's not the only part that's plastic is on the front of it where they did, you know, the attachment of the taffy to it. And then the back of the building is porcelain. So I think that definitely was a sleeper this year. I think it was a really good piece overall. So that's, I had two kind of to, to go with one or the other here. Really, that's my sleeper as well. I, that one, I love how that taffy, that smeared taffy on the front, it's so bright. It looks like, I mean, I know it's neon, but it looks neon. And yeah, same, that piece will not get lost in a setup. And I like it because it can be, I view it themed as a couple ways to where you can put it in a carnival and have like a fun, like a, you know, a fun themed taffy shop like you'd see during like Six Flags Fright Fest or whatever your local theme park is whenever they go for Halloween. Or you could have it on well, what I'm going to do, like a farm, like it's a cool taffy shop on a farm, like homemade taffy that's all themed up that way. So I love that one. Um, but to just be different, I haven't seen this one in person, but I really want it. And I totally had slept on it. And then people started posting pictures and now it's sold out everywhere. It's the Frightmore Farm. And I really wish I had bought that earlier this year because like Gift Spice is sold out. Uh, E-Hobby Tools is sold out. They're all sold out of it this year. And some people in the Facebook groups, I guess, are starting to get them and have been posting pictures. It's got the green light that, you know, lately Lee Mac go a little crazy on the green light, but it's still, I think it looks pretty good for a static building. But um, I haven't seen that one, so I guess I can't technically do it, but Terribly Twisted, that one rocks. And if you get it on coupon, which we'll talk about coupons in a minute, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that whole thing this year, I think it's a heck of a deal. You know, so I, I'm with you on that for sure. Um, you know, let's get into the questions here because some I've got three of them because some of them, there's a lot to them or there's some good discussion around it. And this one kind of goes with that last one. So let's just kind of go right into that. Andrew's videos. Andrew, what's up? I know Mac. Mac, you know him as well. Yeah. Um, yep. This is from YouTube. He said, was there any item in the lineup that didn't catch your eye based on the website images? But when you saw it in person, your opinion changed on it. And we kind of talked about that a little bit, like sleeper building. But um, was there anything, I guess in your case, it would be, um, Kayla, it would be a taffy shop probably. But is there something else that you just totally whipped on when you saw the pictures and, you know, you were just way wrong on it? Actually, it's really funny because this goes really well with this. Um, I was going to say the Frightmore Farm because I did get one of those. I was able to order one of those before they sold out. Oh, you're lucky. Out. You're lucky. <laughs> And I really like it. I think it outdoes the creepy barn. It certainly outdoes the dilapidated barn um, for people that are really into those pumpkin patch themes. Um, I really like it. It's super I feel like cool you're rubbing building. it in my face here right now. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just, I'm giving you my honest opinion. No, um, I'm kidding. <laughs> like, I, I really like that. Um, you know, when I first started doing villaging, I wasn't mm -hmm. into the whole pumpkin patch thing, right? The farm, this and that. I like the super creepy like Frankenstein's lab, Dr. Tingles, Mount Gloom, like that type of thing with the big mountains, right? Yep. And then I started doing the pumpkin patches and this one, I don't know, it just fits in really well and it kind of ties in between the two because it does have that creepy kind of look to it, you know, kind of like the creepy barn, but the lighting on it's so much better than the creepy barn. The creepy barn gets lost, but this one, it's like, boom, right there. You've got this like really cool old school broken down barn that goes really well into just about any type of pumpkin patch display, corn maze display, farm display, however you want to do that type of theme. It works really well. So when it does, I don't think it'll retire. Obviously you'll probably be able to get it, you know, either next year or when it comes back into stock. I highly recommend picking that piece up. I very much like it. Well, I will for sure. I, I would pick it up now, actually, if I could find it. <laughs> uh, Mac, what do you have here? Was there something you saw that you were just way off on in the pictures? 
Well, to piggyback off you guys, I really dig the taffy one, but I actually liked it when I saw the images. Like, I'm like, oh, I, I my favorite color is green. So as soon as I saw the green, I'm like, that's awesome. And I love taffy. I live in Florida and we have saltwater taffy galore here. So I'm like, it made me, it made me hungry, like looking at it. So that was a good sign. But I think for the, the one that I wasn't really wowed with the pictures is the Black Raven Manor. I don't know why I didn't notice in the photos how neat it was. I guess maybe it's because it looked like a lot of the other houses I've seen. But seeing it like in person, it is really cool. The black light in there with the ghost, it's very impressive. And the black light with the white really helps it to stand out and make it its own. Because I have nothing like it in my village and it's really cool. That one is awesome. And it's funny, we have it's gotten, great. you know, we're like 40 minutes in, half an hour or something, and we haven't really even talked about that one because it's kind of been mm -hmm. overshadowed. But for me, that's like, Jack's was my favorite, but that's like the second one right by. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a haunted house that people go after for a long time, as they do with the big animated Lee Max haunted house when they retire. Yes. And um, I'm going to pair something with that later. We'll talk about that so I can, I can give it some love. But mine would definitely be the Jack's pumpkin farm is for what the, the website images, you know, how my opinion on it changed because again, I just, it did nothing for me in the pictures for whatever reason. I don't know why. I just, I figured it was just almost like a table piece. Like it didn't even really have much light at all. I just kind of thought it was just one of those kind of pieces. And I don't like those anymore just because you guys know how it is at night is where these things come alive. And if you have just some of those table pieces that don't have any light on them, like I have a lot of cool department 56 pumpkin patch pieces. But at night, you can't see the details. There's no light on them at all. They're just yeah. ceramic, you know. Um, so that would be the one for sure that not only did I like it, but it turned out to be my favorite of the year. Um, I'd I, like I, to I just love that. add a comment. Sorry, it's kind of hard to tell when you guys are done talking to add a comment. So I apologize yeah. if I no interrupt. Problem. That's not my intent. It's all um, good. I just wanted to add to that and say, when the picture because you were saying that in the pictures it just doesn't look that great i think lean mac should really explore the idea of doing different photos to market like as the marquee you know and how they market their houses because realistically when you go to their website and you look across the top when you click on the village that you're looking at and they just have that very generic kind of photo there where they just have like those plain bases it does not at all accent all of the detail and work that they put into these pieces and i think True. that really adds to your point when you look at this like that's a big piece for them to be honest for a stagnant piece it was relatively expensive and just having the lighting on it and it is really a cool piece but if you don't photograph it correctly if you don't market it correctly and really show the detail and the emphasis of where you've put that in the piece then nobody's going to know that it's something that they should really take a look at and purchase. I'm with you. I mean, Spookyville, I started this channel because when I got into the hobby after a couple of years of it, I just realized, well, these, these, wait a minute. I don't really know what these things look like because things mm -hmm. I didn't really care for when they're lit, they can be totally different. Like it's yeah. just, you don't, that's what lean max their bread and butter, right? I mean, department 56, I don't think needs it as much because the department 56 stuff is more static for the most part. Okay. It has that gorgeous ceramic detail. Lean max lives and dies by the lighting because at least in my opinion, because the people like us that are really into spooky town, they care more about that. It just seems like, and especially because I talk to both and I straddle both sides. I am a big department 56 fan, but it, you know, the, you're paying for the lighting with Lemax typically. And the Lemax pieces that I like the most do have the best lighting. So yeah, yeah totally True. with the with the pictures. In a way, it does kind of make it fun too, though, that it even if the hardcore, you know, like us, we still don't know what we're going to get when we actually see these things in person. It does make it that True. first that first trip to Michael's is always really exciting because it's like you really you don't even know the scale of some of these pieces. Cause when they're all by themselves, it it's a crapshoot, sort of. Jax is a perfect example for that too because the first time I saw it I thought it was a really small piece Same. it's not it's got a large footprint on it it takes quite a bit of space and there's a lot going on 
with that piece. I mean, it's a perfect example for that. And it is fun because you don't know what you're going to get. But at the same time, <laughs> if you only can order it online because you can't get it at the store by you, then you kind of, you know, you have to think some people may not have the budget or the space. So it's between one or another. So really putting that information out there for people to make like an educated decision per se on it, I think is, is important. So it's, it's twofold, you know? Sure. Um, I guess let's let's go to another question here now. So Scott C left this on my YouTube page. This is a very long comment. So I apologize, Scott, for reading this wrong. This is the Village Idiots, and I'm an idiot, so I I put that disclaimer out there. So uh, Scott C from YouTube, he says, "Hi Doug, just throwing this out there for you and the crew. Being that Lee Max has been the leader of Halloween Village stuff for 20 years now, and I'm not taking any anything away from Department 56. Do you feel that this year did not live up to Lee Max releases from years?" Uh, he means the quality and design of the houses themselves, like the toy factory being plastic parks. Um, it's a long comment here. I'm kind of just picking the, the bits out of it here. But um, and then, what do you guys think about Michael's taking advantage by hiking up prices, knowing collectors would buy with or without the coupons? Scott, there's a lot there, so thanks. Sorry for reading it wrong. But guys, so basically, Great what do you guys think generally this year? And then we can get into the coupon situation as well with Michael's. Kayla, start here. I mean, where, where do you think this year kind of falls? So politely commenting on it, I would say it was a good year. Overall, though, I, I was relatively disappointed this year. Um, the Black Ravens Manor, it did give me kind of that spooky vibe that I really like with with the spooky town releases right mm -hmm. jack's pumpkin patch was great because it was a great piece for that theme the ghoulish gourd was my favorite this year great restaurant theme but then i start kind of getting into these other pieces right so you have how many pieces that came out 20 to 25 pieces i mean there was a lot this year mm -hmm. there was a lot of lighted buildings and things right when you start thinking about all of them and yet we're still commenting consistently on the same few so to me, that kind of speaks volumes about even if it's a lighted piece or not, because we've commented on them. I mean, one of his most underrated ones was the Dragon's Lair for Mac, mm -hmm. you know? So I feel like that's, you know, it's kind of a letdown. I think they really kind of missed the mark with with who their main base collectors are. Because, you know, we're really involved in the, in the spooky town groups on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. And you see the comments all the time. What, when are we going to get back to that really good spooky town base theme with the scary buildings with those quintessential halloween themes with the dracula and the frankenstein like the frankenstein's laboratory i think i've got it sitting behind mm -hmm. me you know things like that that really scream halloween because if you want to start inviting these other people to be collectors to join our kind of little club per se you know you've got to kind of reach out to them and i feel like the best way to do that is to entice them through those really true to theme halloween pieces and this year i just kind of look around at them and i'm like it's not all that exciting you know like the jazz club for example the looking yeah. at that one i think it's the zombie jazz cafe specifically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. looking at that one if you were not a collector you would think to yourself what what is this you know it's a zombie cafe, but it has skeletons out front of it, you know, but when you put it in your display and you get a black light on it and you get it going into the theme, it looks fantastic. So I think there's a few different ways to look at this question. But for me, I just think overall, there have been better years in Lee Max releases as a whole than into this year. Cool. Mac, what do you think? I mean, I haven't done the the Lee Max gig for long enough to know like what years are better than others but I, I will say that this year like Kayla said was good but there was room for improvement and I think like you mentioned Doug what what Lee Max is really about is the lighting and for this year specifically I noticed an overwhelming amount of static pieces with the with the, the little click on light, like the Dragon's Lair, like the Zombie Jazz Cafe, which I like both of those. But without that external lighting, it really knocks them down a few notches. And for them to make these pieces that look great, but without the lighting, lose it when you put it in an, like a legit display, it, it messes up the flow of what they've been doing over the past several years. Because I think they were on a really good streak especially around like 2016, 2017, and then kind of, I don't know, it, it got a little jumbled up this year. But there were some high notes, 
and there were some low notes for this year. Um, and also to quickly touch on the the whole coupon fiasco, because I know that's a big you know discussion right now in in a lot of Lemax pages. Uh, this just personally, Lemax is not my bread and butter, at least on my channel. Mm -hmm. I'm more so into haunting and and spirit yep. Halloween and animatronics. So I don't. You do great out, stuff with um, the animatronics, by the oh, way. Thank I, you. I love it. anybody who's watching. If you've never seen Max's channel, you need to check it out. He does all this thank stuff. You. I appreciate it. Yeah, but like the the Lemax thing is a great side thing that I love to do, and I, I adore getting the pieces and checking them out. But without the coupons for someone who has to buy a lot of other things, it just it gets very constricting on what I'm able to purchase. For example, the Toy Factory despite it being my favorite this year is probably not something I'm going to get without that good coupon. And, um, you know, to see them take away the coupons, especially when we know that they're kind of being they're they're priced beyond their margin for mm -hmm. you to use the coupon makes it odd when they don't offer it. And I don't know if that's the change in leadership that Michaels is going through or what the case may be, maybe COVID. I'm not sure, but, Regardless, I think it was a big blow for a lot of people this year. Uh, you know, with the coupon thing, and Kayla, I know you didn't comment on it, so I'll let you in just a second here with that. Before I get into, like, where I compare this year, yeah, that's what hacks me off and why I didn't even do as many this year as well. I mean, and the, the Toy Factory, I actually just returned it because I only got that at 20% off, and mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't like it enough to keep it for <laughs> Yeah, not for worth that. it. For no, and then – I did actually get a couple good coupons because of signing up on the AC Moore site, which gave me those two things. But I had to, for the first one, like fight a Michael's manager, you know, to, to get it. I mean, not fight, but it was a, it was kind of an ordeal. And then I feel bad because during this whole situation, it's like, I don't want to be arguing with a retail worker. I feel like a jerk, but at the same time, I don't want to feel like I'm being had because yes, Michael's does price things knowing you're going to get it with a coupon. I would guess probably what, what's, if you look at the other websites, around 50% off coupon, right? That's around your real retail, I think, of what it True. would be. So it it sucked. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> the coupon situation sucked. I know that a lot of people, because I, I mean, you know, doing this channel, I get to talk to a lot of people, and anytime I would put something up, and people are pissed about it. I mean, frankly, they would be they're angry and kind of, you know, like, hey, I would like to do this, but I can't this year because of the cost. and you know, like you, Mac, it's, it's just what it is, right? Spooky town this year is yep. not a priority for a lot of people anyways, just it's because true. of things going on. And right. I, I don't know whose fault it is. I would, I mean, knowing how Michael's is, cause I buy other stuff from Michael's too. Michael's is always a pain in the butt. Like I, I wish they didn't have some of the stuff they had because I hate how they do that coupon pricing model. It just sucks. Yeah. They jack their prices up knowing you're going to buy the coupon. So yeah. I think it's more of a Michael's issue. And when you look at the other online retailers, your gift spices, your e-hobbies, um, some of the independent people who are doing it now, prices are fine. There are they're decent, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, you know, it's kind of a side thing, but when people talk about the quality of the Lemax stuff, it's uh, in prices, you know, how it was in the past. Now I've only been doing it really the last hardcore the last six years i've been aware of it for a while and actually the price is kind of they've always kept me out of it for a long time <laughs> even whenever i wanted to get into it so yeah. these buildings have always been expensive and they've always broken down like my favorite buildings they break down so that's not really the issue to me i guess speak for better or worse i wish they were better qc i'm not ex not uh, excusing that i guess but it just kind of comes with the territories what i've used so i don't really that doesn't bother me so much but the coupon mm -hmm. thing that bums me out and again, like the zombie, the zombie uh, place, I feel bad. I don't like that because as a musician, I should love that place. And I, mm -hmm. the theming on that one, I think they did a pretty good job of it, even though yeah, I, I, agree. I, just, I just don't have interest because it's kind of boring lighting. But yeah. I know some people adore that building. It's got that whole New Orleans vibe. It's, yeah, it's, I love that New Orleans vibe, but it doesn't even play jazz. At the jazz. <laughs> no. And how do you miss that in a jazz right. building? It is a jazz club and it has no soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't I know. It that. doesn't make sense. <laughs> I know. I know. That's a missed opportunity in and of itself. And uh, mm -hmm. Kayla, on the coupon thing, before I get into what I think about this year, did you have anything to add, you know, with the coupon situation? Yeah, I, I do want to add something to that. So in regards to the coupon situation, I think 
for Michael's, I've shopped at Michael's for a long time and I do a lot of different crafts. So I avidly use coupons. They used to allow you to use competitor coupons, not only just their coupons, their entire coupon policy has changed. Before they even stopped doing the competitor coupon this year, they limited the competitor coupons previously to applicable items. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you had a Joann's coupon, you couldn't even use it on Spooky Town because they didn't sell Spooky Town. Oh, so yeah they would do this weird thing. So I, you know, you could tell that it was kind of heading in this direction. I think Mac hit it right on the head when he said the new CEO came in because all of a sudden there was these very sudden changes, mm -hmm. which again, Mac mentioned with COVID and everything going on, the stores being closed, their overhead prices you know, or costs and things like that with all this um, material and product just sitting there not being sold and we're just passing through the seasons. I, I understand why there's been such a coupon issue. With the specific AC Moore to Michael's 60% off coupon thing, I believe, I re, if I remember correctly, it was advertised that if you signed up, you would get a 60% off coupon that you could use at Michael's. Correct. It was right? a Michael's coupon that was sent to me that did not work. The link went nowhere. So wow. here's my thing. Like you, you had mentioned that you said, with everything going on, you don't want to be that guy that's arguing with the retail people because everything that's been going on with the retail manager, the employees, why do they got to argue back? You got a 60% off coupon that's sitting there. You can see that the link's broken. Give them the 60% off and move on with your day. I don't understand just, it. Yeah. Your customer's happy. You know, like you go to the same stores. If you're a frequent shopper, they know who you are, even in your specific situation, right? Mm -hmm. But even if you're not, why put up the struggle? It's not coming out of your paycheck. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, it's not just... It's not even a 90% or something like real screw jobby thing, like 95% off you're trying to use some, some shady newspaper clipping yeah. or something. When it obviously, like for me, and I can speak with experience because this has happened to me, and it, it, I was hacked off when I got my uh, pumpkin patch. That's what I got jacks with it. Mm -hmm. And I was treated like I was a criminal for wanting the, for having the audacity to use a 60% off coupon that they sent me. And that they like, gave you. Right. <laughs> like, come on, man. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, just like, I, I guess for me, I'm always the type of person where I outweigh like the risk and the benefits of things. That's just my nature with what I do for work and things like that. So I apply that to everything. If I were a retail manager and I've already got all this other crap I have to deal with and the people that are coming in, not wanting to wear masks or do this or do that, just, just do it. The 60% off. They get, Michael's has always given 60% off coupons in the past. Do you really think it's a fake coupon? I mean, come on. Like, and you just like everything transitioned. I don't know. I have some strong feelings about it, obviously. And I just think that some people just really need to really look at like priorities and things. And if you've got a coupon, just use it. Michael should have done a better job stepping up with their customer service, making sure these things were handled appropriately. They should have sent notices out to all of their stores immediately when this started becoming an issue because it lasted for quite some time before mm -hmm. they did anything about it. And they should have handled it much more efficiently. You have all these people registered with these um, accounts with them for the discounts and stuff. Have you ever gotten a discount with it when they scanned your little barcode? Mm -hmm. No, like you don't get anything for that either. So like, it's like, you know, I, I don't know. I could go on and on about no, it. So I, I just stop there. I know what you mean. I agree with it all. Um, you know, to, to get this back on the, the last part of the, of the, I guess the first part of the question, because we have one more to get through here after this. Um, where do I feel this year in general? How was it? I guess kind of the same. It's it was very top heavy. For me though, how I've learned to classify or how I've internally classified these things, if if there are two buildings that I would deem will be classics, if there are at least two of them, looking back, it's probably a good year. If there are three of them, it's probably a pretty decent year. And I think there are three of those buildings at least this year. So I would classify that, especially, you know, at some point here I want to do a big village idiots podcast with a a bunch of with you folks and we go through the decades about what was our favorite and least favorite years that would be a lot of fun um, but I think it's one of the stronger years of the last part of this decade I thought the mid part of the decade they really had some issues with spooky town and it has um, I view the, the gourd pub the uh, jacks and then the uh, black raven manor sorry my brain is right here I think those are awesome Bill I think those are three that yeah. are going to be looked back upon 
that people are always going to want to buy. And then when they get retired, they're going to, they're going to go for a lot. And there's some decent other ones. Yeah, though, it's, it's very top heavy. I mean, we talk about the same ones. So it's not like one of those spread out years where you have a ton of good stuff. I don't really, though, the whole, I don't want to give away part of that discussion when it happens, but really the 2010s, though, I feel like are pretty much a top heavy year or, or a decade for the most part. Most of the, the years have been top heavy with one or two great pieces and then some middling ones where you had like the early 2000s where you had like 2004, 2007, which is just like a murderer's row of amazing pieces. And I wish I had been into it at the time because I can only imagine what it would have been like to walk into Michael's, you know, and seeing all that crazy stuff. But I, I thought it was a pretty good year. I like those mugs. I saw you had one, right, Kayla? You have, I really dig those coffee mugs. Oh, yeah. Yes. I got the whole... I got the whole set of them. They were really cool. My only thing is, is that they're, I like to say they're not Kayla size because this is like a half of what I would use as a cup of coffee. They're like really yeah. tiny. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually afraid to drink out of mine. I'm going to put them in an office thing, but I've got my, it's, the thing is though, is because I, I have a gigantic Frankenstein head mug that like well, I'm, I'm awesome. with you. Like I want to crank it up in the morning with coffee. I need a bucket basically. So yeah. all, I, all I'm going to do is ruin my mad pumpkin patch uh, thing and not for optimal coffee intake. So anyways, yeah. all right, guys, let's get on to the last question here. And we're, we talk about this little forehand. So we're each going to kind of tackle this our own way, but this was from Instagram at charger, Chris. And what's up, Chris, you comment on a lot of stuff and I appreciated this. Um, I'm kind of hacking this question up again. So apologies, but it is uh, select one best building from this year. And I'm sorry, select one best building in general and pair it with, he says each of the 2020 releases, there's a lot there. So let's, let's each pick a building. Let's pair a classic spooky town or something from before this year with something this year that came out. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kayla, we'll start with you. So I'm going to go with my favorite house of the year, the ghoulish gourd. Mm -hmm. And I really like contrast in my displays. So I was really kind of trying to figure out which other bar restaurant I think would look really cool with it. And I'm going to go with the, I think it's the zombie cafe, not this year's zombie jazz. The black cafe. light one, right? Yes. The black light one. And if you put those two buildings next to each other, I think that would be such an interesting contrast in the dark, not necessarily during the day, but in the dark, because if you're, if you have like a main street where you're going bar hopping and that's the theme or the story of your display, mm -hmm. having those there with like the zombie cafe hitting the corner of that block and then moving down into the ghoulish gorb wasteland pub, like those really super detailed, really cool uh, bar buildings. What an interesting display that would be so much color, so much variation, like so much life to it. And that's what it is when you go bar hopping, right? The life of the party. I think that would be a really interesting pairing. That's, that's awesome. That's a really good one. I never think of the zombie cafe. I actually, I, I have a, a video of it up and it's, I think it's one of the best black, if not the best black light piece. I mean, it's kind of the, the marquee black light building. Cause it looks mm -hmm. in daytime. It's okay. But at night it looks awesome. With that black light showering the whole facade. That would, yeah. That's a great pairing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Jack, what, what, would, what would be yours? I think, I think mine this year is going to be one of my favorite pieces, which was the spider cider house. Um, I just really like the lights on it. I like the big spider and I think it goes really, really well with the wasteland pub from, I forgot what year it was. I think it was 2018. If 18. I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, which was my favorite piece of that year. Uh, what, what both of them have in common is that grimy industrial feel a lot of metal not like metal on the piece necessarily, but it looks metallic and it, it's an aesthetic that I really like the really grimy kind of like fallout ish appeal. Both of them have like their big center piece, like with the waste, with the wasteland pub being the gas mask and the spider cider house being the spider, mm -hmm. put them next to each other. They both have the green light, which like you said, Lee Max is going a little crazy with, but, it, they complement one another. And I think if you got that little, the little pub accessory piece with that, I think it would, it would look real good. It's a good idea for it. And it's funny you both mentioned the Wasteland Pub. What an awesome building like that that was, even though, you know, it's not, I'm a traditional Halloween person. Typically I go towards those, but man, the pub is good. I, 
I really thought they were going to have a sequel piece this year to that. Mm -hmm. I, I can't believe they haven't had one yet. And that's a missed opportunity too, because on your previous podcast with um, the other two individuals you had on, you talked about like the other pieces about how being hard to pair. Mm -hmm. And that one was up there on that, right? It was number so two. It yeah. yeah. So I found wow. it really interesting that Mac and I both picked that as something to yeah, use pair. pair with the building. <laughs> See, yeah. and that's what's fun though. You guys have a totally different view on that, especially the bar hopping. I hadn't thought of it. That's a really cool theme for that. Mm -hmm. and Clever. You, yeah, and Mac, your thing with the, the pieces, the uh, big centerpieces on the buildings. And there's a lot that could go with that. I even think of like EBGB's, the rock club, which I love that that piece as well, um, kind of the town setting. But it's, yeah, that's what's fun with this, is all the, the different opinions. This way, yeah. I love talking to all these people on, on here. You guys are fun to talk to for all the different ideas. Uh, I guess for me, I will talk about the Black Raven Manor because I love that building. And if not for Jack's, it would have been my favorite because as a traditional Halloween person, I love the traditional haunted house. And I thought that it's one of the best ones that they've done this decade. And it's the best haunted house they've done since uh, Last House on the Left, which is like one of my, that's a top three piece for me of all time. I love Last House on the Left. So I would pair it with that one. But if you don't have deep pockets, Last House on the Left is hard to get nowadays. So um, you could put it with... Uh, Actually, it's right behind you, Kayla. The uh, the kind of the last house on the left tower is is what I call it. The uh, ghostly manor. Yes, ghostly manor from 2016, I think. Uh, mm. That's funny because I have the other one is right here. They're paired together. Yep, so. that's that's funny. Oh, yeah. they, they go together great. And uh, if you wanted an accessory though with Black Raven Manor, pony up and get the uh, Hungry Tree House. I'm a huge fan of Hungry Tree House. That's like I'm a huge fanboy for that piece. So. It goes with the haunted houses. I, that's what I would say to go together. It's a good uh, pick. Fun one. Yep. Um, well, yeah, guys. I mean, that's that's kind of all the uh, the thoughts here. I guess one one last thing. We'll do a bonus round here. Uh, favorite accessory this year? I know Mac. You kind of mentioned the, uh, the the drunken pumpkin guy out there, but does, do we have any favorite accessories? Uh, Kayla, start with you. I really like that little witch's brew house. You know which one I'm the talking about? The coffee shop, yes. I, yeah, the little tiny coffee shop thing. I have to get that. I have to get that this year for my It's bigger than you think it is. Like, I, when I saw it at um, Michael's, mm -hmm. I was kind of surprised. I thought it was going to be like, because, you know, sometimes they have the figurines don't really match with the size or the um, scaling. And then the medium-sized ones do the same thing. This one is a little bit bigger. I really appreciate it. It's got great detail on it. And I think it's a really cute add on for in like a carnival area or for a pumpkin patch area, or even if you have like a witch's coven, I think it's a really cute, inexpensive piece to pick up that adds a little bit of gumption to that area. Gumption. I like it. <laughs> Mac, I know you kind of mentioned the one, the pumpkin guys, but is there anything specifically? There are a few this year that caught my attention one of them which is weird because there's not really anything to it it's the spooky windmill it just looks oh, so yeah. dilapidated and creepy uh, i just it, i like it i like that dilapidated look and it, it it fits well like you could put it with a lot of things and then another one uh that i enjoyed too really small piece though are the little crazy tombstones specifically the one with the clown shoes and i have I have zero clown stuff in my Lemax display, which is something I'm looking at in the future to get. But that tombstone specifically, I just thought that was a funny, clever idea. So I threw that in, honorable mention. Mine would be, I, I saw it, luckily Menards had it, because Michael's, I don't think, carries it this year. The Pumpkin Festival, it's the wagon with the sign on it. And I love that piece. It is cool. It's kind of expensive. I mean, it's like 20 bucks. And Menards... Menards actually price this thing nice. I got to say, after the Michael stuff, going to Menards when they have like everything on discount is, is great. But uh, Pumpkin Festival rules. I would, uh, I like that windmill too. I did pick up the windmill. I think that that's actually a pretty well built piece. And then, uh, mm -hmm. you know, figure wise though, that pumpkin monster, a lot of people are digging on that. I love that. I'm actually trying to assemble a real costume of that to be a pumpkin ghoul every year. And I, he's, he's going to be in my pumpkin patch every year. He kind of reminds me of this, I think it's Spooky Farmer from a, a few years ago, the pumpkin farmer with the side that I have outside Mad Pumpkin Patch. They're going to be outside my Mad Pumpkin Patch. So that's, uh, yeah, but I would go to the Pumpkin Festival. I think that's a cool, 
accent piece, even though that coffee one is is good. I think there were some pretty cool accent pieces this year, really. Some years my, they, they whiff on that, but I think it was pretty strong. Yeah, this year, you know, we talked about, you know, the overall quality of the year. The houses might have been a little lackluster, but they did do a really good job, I think, with the figurines and the accessories this year. I will give Lee Max that. I do enjoy the detail and things and that. So when I picked up a bunch of the figurines this year, I was I was very happy about that. So I good job to them on that one. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to have to rename this discussion Lee Max Spooky Town because I feel bad there was like <laughs> – on my end, there's no Department 56, so I think I'll, I'll label it as such so Department 56 people can get their pitchforks down and not come after me. This <laughs> one. I, since we're like at the very end, I did the Patty's Pumpkin Farm or Patty's Pumpkin Patch. I wanted to get that, but man, again, the prices, it's just uh, not this year. Department 56 was not in the cards. I will shout out, though, the Cemetery House, the Trick or Treat Lane. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that one. That house does look really cool. I probably will pick that up at some point when uh, the budget is a little bit better situation. But um, yeah, I, I, apologies, Department 56 people. Next year, I hope to be back big on that. I can, I can discuss that with some merit. But guys, this was a lot of fun talking spooky town like this. I think this is pretty comprehensive. We worked it up and down the line for the uh, 20th anniversary of spooky town. It's a good year if we were going to go in depth like this, the 20th anniversary year. So yeah, um, yeah thank you guys both. And yeah, definitely... If you watch my channel and you've never seen uh, Mac on Hot Former or uh, Kayla on Case Crafts, check them out. Uh, guys, anything you want to say, I guess, plug or whatever before we sign off here? Kay after or Kayla? You, Mac, I was going to say, after you, Mac, go right ahead. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, there's really not too much to plug. Check out my display video on my channel for my 2020 display. Let me know what you think about it, good or bad, in the comments. And, uh, yeah, thank you for having me on here, Doug. That was a lot of fun. Thanks, Mac. It was nice we could do this, finally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Kayla? Um, well, it was nice to actually meet you, Mac. Um, I yeah, figured, it was too. I found out through Doug, actually, you and I are neighbors. We live in the same area of Florida. So are you serious? Oh, I'm, dead, I'm dead serious. And I'll soon be down there with you guys. Yeah. It's just funny. So we all, all live right by each other. Coffee. Yes. <laughs> so I extend the invitation when Doug gets down for the two of you to come check out my massive display. And I'd love, love to love to do a video again with the two of you. I had so much fun, but this time do a walkthrough on the village and get your guys' opinion and shock of coming into the house with it. That'd be so, exciting. For sure. For sure. Definitely look for that. Yeah, definitely look for that on Kay's Crafts. Come back and check it out. Um, all the displays I've got coming out. I'm really excited. Like I said earlier, I've got a 10 foot carnival display coming out. It's a big multi-level carnival display. So really looking forward to that. And thanks again, Doug, for having me. I'm super excited to have been on here and I look forward to all the future stuff we're going to be able to collab on all three of us. So thanks again. All right. Thank you guys. And again, thank you guys very much for, for coming. I want to thank all the, the viewers out there too, who I didn't really know when I kind of put this video podcasting idea together with uh, some just friends kind of chatting about Halloween villages, uh, how it will work out. But thank you all for the, the comments. Everybody leaves some really nice comments and very um, thoughtful comments on what we could discuss and other things. I'm hoping to keep this rolling for a while, at least. Um, I mean, I'm not going to stop this. I hope to keep make this a regular thing, but it's for the season. I'm not sure how many more episodes we'll have for the season one of it, but. Uh, Mac and Kayla, I would love to have you guys back as well on here for other yeah. other fun topics as we go. So, all right, guys, uh, that said, uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Check out their channels. I'll have those in the link below, and I will see you guys soon.